All right, hello everybody. Welcome back for another breakdown. And today we're gonna have a little short one. This is, I just randomly was looking online. This commercial came up and I thought, hey, that's a good idea there. Little touch of nuance in a room, kind of difficult. I think it's actually a McDonald's commercial, uh, but we're gonna look at it, let's go. Okay, so we scroll through this thing and what do we got here? We got young kid putting up artwork. I put up artwork in my house and then I think McDonald's, right? Hungry, can I get some VFX on a phone? Yes, please. Send it off to Mickey D's and it's dark. McDonald's is trying to save money on lighting and the whole thing is kind of dark. And here we go, we got more. Oh, family, yes, please. Can I get a Big Mac? And it's raining and things are not looking good. It's moody, this poor delivery guy in the rain and more VFX on the phone shot. Don't do the doorway on me. Oh, ta-da, friend's over, and that's an old friend. Oh, or is it mom? Got you, tears. Okay, so that's the ad, right? Like this doorway stuff, we've done that a bunch before, and we've also done it in uh, a few videos back. I think we did a doorway one, specifically. So for this one, really, I mean, this is, it's all framework, and it's all dark right from the start. If we do, oops, what did I just do there? Get out of there. Where's my pen tool? There we go. So record playing, backlight going this way, levels all nice and low, right? A little bit coming in this way. You got your practical thing lighting up over here, but really right from the get go, right? We're setting a very low level. And if we go full screen here, what happens? So this is the challenging one, right? When you were trying to, okay, how are we gonna make indoors feel moody, but it's supposed to be daytime, I'm imagining, All right? Like this is a weird choice. This is one that you have to sell to everybody like, hey, Let's make it daytime, but this kid, maybe he's just moving out of his own. Life is, I don't know, is it good? Is it bad? Uh, you know, you have to weave your own story as the cinematographer to help sell darkness over the line. But let's get some practicals with some really thick shades, right? And let's have those in the shot. This is a little hot spot. I don't know. I don't know if I like that lamp. Um, but then we're going to go through this window. And we're going to light through that, but we are not going to want to see the window, right? Because normally in the framework here, we are shooting into the L of the room to get that depth. We're getting a little bit of depth out there, but we're getting nothing because this window is here. But the only other way to do this, if we were going for dark and down, the only other way to do, it, do this besides lighting it up and closing it is to open it up, but maybe out there is no good, right? It looks like there's a building right across the way, so it doesn't add that much depth. So this is like a little workaround, but we don't have any shears. There's no curtains. What have we done here? We're breaking the rules. Well, this is maybe just a limitation of the location. This is where you have to shoot and it's a white room. Uh, and white room is hard to control the level, especially when you have this much haze here. So you're gonna definitely want to neg as much behind the camera this way as you can to suck up all of this level. Then again, there's not that much level coming through here because we don't have any really direct light. It's just soft ambient light. So if you did, if you did have something cool out that window, you put your shears on it, then you put your curtains on top and then you can shape the light with those curtains and maybe you, you light from this point. So you throw some level this way, and then you return bounce to the face, right? And then that's how you can create that little bit of highlight that looks better than just this, you know, not this flatness, but just flatness, right? Because this looks nice. But this is an interesting take because we light up this window and all this light points to the ground, right? Gets him a little bit, right? It's something there. Uh, but then it's all the, all the contrast comes from here and the practicals on. And normally with the framework stuff in a room, the, a, a more ideal location would be, yeah, this window here is great, but then another window here would be nice, right? Or another window off screen that way would be nice because then we could light that way. You know, you could go ambient out this window and go harder light through here to create your shaft and to have your little highlight side of the face and your little shadow side. And maybe back here behind the stairs, you could put a little backlight to edge it out and then you could balance to that window. But with only one window in a practical location, it's kind of hard. This is where you could, if you want, do the Titan tube rig up here, right? Just to set room tone. Uh, and then, you know, you could ping off lights left and right as soon as you set that room tone. But really the room tone here is being set by this lamp back here and then having the practicals on. So tricky, tricky location. We're still, we're doing little things here to help with the depth, right? Like giving ourselves little clues because this big wall here is just a flat, that's it. There's no more depth. 
especially with this giant window here, it just blocks everything off, which makes it feel small and is also hard to pick out our talent because there's no real lighting contrast or um, blocking or framing in the image to allow us to get a good look at our man here. So he goes through, rips it off. Now this one, okay, this is interesting. You got that, you got this thing in the foreground, which is nice. This one's not on, right? You can't have too many practicals on when you're a college kid living in a uh, out of home for his first time. We got little practical elements here, but down, really down on the levels. Let's take a look if we get out of full screen. I mean, look at that. Highs, not that high, right? And that's those little elements of daylight seeping through. Those are not that high. Most of it is in here. Lots and lots of darkness, not too lifted, just setting that room tone. Okay, from there, let's go bigger. This is the one that we want to talk about right now. This is, now we've set ourselves up perfectly here because now we can, let's use this lamp as an excuse, right? Let's use this window as an excuse. But then because we don't see the whole thing, we can just add a little bit extra here. Give me a little bit more level so that this is just a little bit above whatever is coming through that window. And then we shoot into the L of the room, right? As he backs up, you can see the L of the room. We're shooting along that wall and we're lighting from the window that we can't see. So this window is in the frame, but it's only there to give you the, uh, the feeling of connection between the lamp on his face or the light on his face and the light in the scene. But real, realistically, we are lighting through a little gap over here, or we're wrapping around with another lamp altogether. Now it doesn't look like there's too much wrap, right? There's not like our little V over here on the side of the face and this beauty wrap. This is played much more natural, much more with the levels, the values all closer together, which creates that. It, all, it creates flatness but it feels a little bit uh, uglier is not the right word, but just more real, less sculpted is, is the better word. But you still get this little highlight, which is nice, right? No, we haven't gone with a crazy backlight or anything like that, but just the framing is really nice because we're shooting along, getting all this in the background. Uh, it's just a really, really nice. Let's see if we can't make that pen any bigger like it normally is Have to find out why that happens. We back up again to the shot we've already seen. And then this one. Now, again, we haven't switched the sides of the room, right? We haven't switched. But now this is beautiful. Now we can really crank up the level on that window and we can even have, have a piece of diffusion to make it even softer to help wrap it around more. You see this value over here. It's not like too much. It's just enough where you get this little bang from the window and then you get just enough wrap on this side to help carry the light around. And really, it feels really dense in the lower part of the image, right? Which is what you need when you're going dark. You, you want to expand those levels so that, so that the, the image doesn't just fall off a cliff right? It gradually gets to darkness, right? Like you can still see a little bit of something in the hair there too. It's like it just gradually ever so softly gets there. And then this just huge amounts of haze, right? Just haziness, which brings those levels, you know, just tames the highs and brings up the shadows and helps separate. So you can go a little bit crazier on the key when you have haze, because it'll just soften it off and make it a little bit more rappy. So that's this look again, nice because once we decided in that Y that we were going to play on this side of the line, looking towards the window, this is what you get when you go in closer, right? It's like the chess moves. You, you know that the first move is okay, going to be the wide, but really, yeah, we'll get the wide, but really we're setting up for five moves later. When we come in for this close up, we don't have to change any lighting. We just bring in a piece of diffusion and that saves 20 minutes relighting the whole thing. Uh, it just makes you work so much quicker. Then we go to the hand and we know that if we're on the shadow side for the hand shot, we know that what's going on here frozen. Okay. Well, uh, DaVinci Resolve just crashed halfway through this thing. I'm not going to start again. So we're going to push on through whatever this is, Windows Media Player. So uh, forgive me for the, uh, the technical issues, but we will solve it. So we know if we're on this side of the line and we're shooting into the shadow, We've already developed that the wind, we're lighting through the window that we can't see. We're setting ourselves up for an easy over the shoulder shot, right? This is your phone shot, your credit card shot. Look at the shadow that transfers here, right? That's what we're looking for. Same thing that happens over the phone. You get that little soft line, which is it's a four by piece of diffusion here. You use our friend's head here to get the diffusion even closer. Then you wrap it around. You put some green screen on there, right? It's not a perfect comp job. It's hard to get this angle of the phone, right? This is always one of those things on set where you're like, oh, it'll be easy. We just get the hand shot. Look, all we have to do is bring in diffusion, a little bit of neg over here, right? And this will create the shadow. This will create the light and we're ready. But then you actually get there and we got to like, okay, we want to see that knee. We want to see his shoulder. You got to get the hand in just the right spot. You don't want your fingers blocking any of the important information. And because this is actually green screen on the day or just a blank black screen, 
Uh, the talent doesn't know where to put their finger, so they put their finger over this thing, and this shot ends up taking four hours because you're just trying to nail it. Um, but really, that is the look at the room. Then we're inside the dark McDonald's, which we've seen before. And was there anything else that we wanted to bring up in this one? I think that was about it. Oh, the doorway stuff, right? Where's the doorway? Yeah. So again, doorway answer, always a tough lighting situation. Boom. Okay. We're going to go with the really hot um, practical light here. We're going to backlight all those things in the background because this is an actual location. We really lift it with some nice warm light where we've got his shoulder in. He's really down. Let's see if we do a, do we do a reverse smile? Nope. We go straight to mom. So mom's is good too because see how she doesn't stay in the room? She's got to come out because she's got to find the light. Look, we got this hot light on there, but she has to find it. If she stays in the door, she doesn't find it. There it is. Now, that's what you tell the talent on the day. You say, listen, yeah, I know you want to stay in your house, right? It's raining. There's some crazy person just uh, running through the rain bringing you McDonald's. That isn't weird. Uh, no, but come out of your house, right? You want to make yourself really vulnerable. So do that. Uh, and then that's how you can actually light them, right? Uh-oh, someone knocked and just left a bag of food. I don't know if I'm eating that bag of food. Oh, yes, enjoy your chicken. Yum. Okay, and then you get that little smile there. This is nice, right? Hot spot, interest in the background, shooting into the L of this room to create depth. We got the nice wooden door behind, shadow, key light, a little bit from the phone. You can see the blue in there. See the blue inside of that, whatever that key is light. But the important thing is step out, right? That's all we have to say really here. Step out. Don't be stuck in there because if you're stuck in there, it's going to be really dark and it's going to be hard to shoot. So anyway, just a real quick look uh, at this commercial that I randomly came across. It has some really good points to it. I don't know who shot it, but uh, kudos to you because you did some good things and keeping it dark and down, but just expanding that toe. Anyway, that'll do it. If you've got suggestions, leave them down in the comments. I'm always looking for great commercials that we can break down. And we will see you in the next one. Goodbye.